Hey ladies and gentlemen, Steven here from Red Lessons. Welcome back to another video. So in today's episode, we're going to be taking a look at 10 fragrance extremes. What do I mean by that? What is the most complimented fragrance in my collection? What is the most daring fragrance in my collection? What is the most opulent fragrance in my collection? What are basically the cream of the crop in my collection? Well, I've put these 10 fragrances together for you. I'm excited to share them with you and also let you know what category each one of them fall in. So make sure to stay tuned. Now, before I begin this video of my top 10 fragrance extremes, and I tell you about all of the different categories and why I selected each one, I do want to mention that if you are a fan of fragrance related content, please do consider supporting this channel by subscribing to it. Make sure to enable all notifications by clicking on that bell icon and give this video a thumbs up by the end of this video if you took something of value from today's episode. So I started thinking about what are the fragrance extremes in my collection. And I would also kind of like to open this up as a tag video. So if there's anybody out there that would be interested in doing such a video, I would certainly encourage you to do that. I think it's always fun to see what other people consider to be of the fragrances at the top of that category in their respective categories and also for the viewers at home leave a comment down below if you have selections that are different from mine but with that being said let's just go ahead and dive into the list and i will go ahead and reveal the 10 categories as well now the first category that i want to talk about is the most expensive what is the most expensive fragrance in my collection and i do have a lalique bottle for Tom Ford's Black Orchid, which I think was like $995. It might be a little cheaper now. And of course it's made of crystal. That one was about a thousand dollars, but I think there is a fragrance that was a flat thousand dollars and with shipping it's even more. And that one by Roja Parfum is called Diaghilev. Now I've also purchased Manhattan by Roja Parfum. And that fragrance is also a thousand dollars American. And so this is probably the most expensive fragrance in my collection. I think it's a thousand dollars, if I'm not mistaken, just in the event that it's not, let's just say Manhattan, which I also purchased and I own, uh, but I love Diagula. Very classy, mossy, a little animalic, a woodsy resinous. It seems to go in many different directions, but I personally love this one. So the next fragrance in my collection is the most kitschy. Now there's a lot of fragrances out there. Of course, there's a fragrance that is shaped like a gold bullion. There's a fragrance that's shaped like a skateboard. There are fragrances that are shaped like robots. So there's so many kitschy fragrances out there. What is the kitschiest one? I even have one in my collection uh, by Melanie Martinez, if I'm not mistaken, and it's shaped like a baby bottle. Well. I started thinking about recent acquisitions of mine and it has to be toy to bubblegum. So this is a teddy bear that can be decapitated in a fragrance bottle that smells like bubblegum. And it's a very photorealistic fragrance. If you ask me, I would say this one is pretty kitschy. And so this is the kitschiest fragrance that I have in my collection, but I have done a video on some of the most unique and kitschy presentations. I'm going to leave a card to that up here if you're interested. That's an entire other list of kitschy bottles, um, some of which really surprised me and my friend. And so I'm going to leave a card to that up here. The next fragrance that I want to talk about is the most daring fragrance in my entire collection. Now, when I think of daring, I typically think of Black Afghano by Nasomato. I think of La Dano Nero by Tiziana Terenzi, A City on Fire by Imaginary Authors, um, even A Midnight Stroll by Gucci. These really dark, smoky fragrances. And believe it or not, there are some smoky fragrances like Patchouli 24 by Le Labo and Interlude for Men by Amouage that I don't, while I do find them to be daring, I don't think they're the most daring. The most daring fragrance in my collection has to be hands down, and I need to try more from this brand, by Beaufort London. This one is called V et Armis. It's a Latin name. This is incredibly dark, incredibly smoky, really gothic, really mysterious. You have to be a very special certain type of person to really pull this off in public. And even when you do wear this, a couple sprays go such a long way. I would never recommend doing more than like two sprays of this fragrance because of how potent and how powerful it is. 
24 plus hour longevity, very smoky, a lot of birch tar and presumably cade oil. Definitely check this one out if you are a fan of daring fragrances. This is resting very comfortably at the top of my list. Now, the next fragrance that I wanna talk about is the most versatile. So kind of the opposite of the most daring, what is the most versatile fragrance in my collection? And it has to be Blue de Chanel. There's never a bad time to wear Blue de Chanel uh, by Chanel. It's this sort of grapefruit, incense-y type of a fragrance. It's woodsy, but it's very fresh, clean, elegant, professional, climate-controlled environment. You can wear it all year round. You can wear it dressed up, dressed down. People love it. You will get complimented on it. I have recommended this designer fragrance probably more than any other designer fragrance, including Aqua de Jo, including Aqua de Jo Profumo, including Dylan Blue, including the original Versace Porom. Blue de Chanel is just an amazing fragrance when it comes to versatility. The next fragrance is the most popular. Now, I was thinking of what is an iconic designer fragrance that most people know, most people have seen, and of course, Aqua de Jo can easily take the top of that list. Angel Men by Thierry Mugler, Lotus et Poron by Issey Miyake. But for this reason, uh, or for the purposes of this video, I decided to put the original Le Mans by Jean-Paul Gaultier. And this can also double as one of the most flankered fragrances in my collection right? Aside from like CK1 or something like that, because they have a summer version every year. But the amount of flankers for Le Mans is just crazy. So this can actually satisfy two categories, most flankered and also most popular. And it seems like everybody that I speak to about fragrances, they know Le Mans by Jean-Paul Gaultier, such an iconic bottle. Many people I've spoken to even own it. The next fragrance I want to talk about is the most opulent smelling fragrance in my collection. Which fragrance is going to make me smell like a king or a Raja or a Sultan or somebody in a position of power? And without a doubt, it's Jubilation 25 by Amouage. It's such a high-end, classy, rich, expensive smelling, a Poppinax and Blackberry type of a fragrance. It's balsamic, but it's fruity at the same time. It's a beautiful, beautiful fragrance. One that I have purchased so many years ago, and it's a staple in my collection. The next fragrance is the most linear fragrance in my collection. So this is a fragrance that is comprised mostly, if not entirely, of base notes. This fragrance does not change at all on your skin. Very predictable outcome. The way that it smells when you apply it on for the first time, it's gonna be the same exact way that it's going to smell three, four, five, six, seven hours later. And this one by Serge Luton is Chergui. Now this one is a dry, hay, tobacco, spicy fragrance, very base heavy. And as you can see, I have the original formulation, very dark liquid, and this stuff lasts a long, long time on my skin, thankfully. And so I love Chergui, one of my favorite fragrances by Serge Luton and one that I think deserves to be in everyone's collection. Now, the next fragrance that I wanna talk about is the most complex fragrance in my collection. Even when I reviewed this one, I mentioned it in my review. I may have even put it somewhere either in the thumbnail or the title or both. And even if you look this fragrance up online, the list of notes, I think exceeds like 60 or something like that. It's truly a complex fragrance. And this one by The Spirit of Dubai is called Turath. I have never smelled and never owned or possessed a more complex fragrance than Turath by Spirit of Dubai. It smells a little sweet, it's rosy, it's spicy, it's woodsy, it's vanillic. It's so hard to describe because there's so many varying elements in there, but Turath is a beautiful, beautiful fragrance. Let me make sure I have it facing the right direction. Yes, I do. Now the next fragrance is the most cloned. So, so many different brands have put out either a direct clone or a twist or some kind of an inspiration of this fragrance. And of course, it's Creed Aventus. Could have been Baccarat Rouge 540, could have been Santal 33 by Le Labo, but I don't think you're gonna find a fragrance with more clones than Creed Aventus. Creed Aventus really takes the cake there. And why not? It's such a powerful uh, and popular fragrance and an iconic smell, everything from Mont Blanc Explorer 
to Orion by Titiana Terenzi to Hachivat by Nishane. There's a lot of fragrances that kind of have that Aventus DNA that don't smell exactly like Aventus per se, but you can tell that this fragrance really pioneered that fruity Shepra genre. And with that being said, I'm gonna talk about my most complimented fragrance. And to be honest, on the niche side, it is Creed Aventus, but on the designer side, I thought about it and Blue de Chanel has done wonders for me. Aqua Di Gio by Giorgio Armani has done wonders for me. But by far, to this day, my most complimented scent, every time I put it on, somebody compliments me on it. Although nowadays it might be a little bit dated, but I still think it smells very modern, very contemporary. It's actually Dior Sauvage, the Eau de Toilette. I've had so much luck and so much success with the Eau de Toilette, wearing it out, going shopping at the mall, wearing it to work, getting complimented by colleagues and people around me. People seem to love the smell of Dior Sauvage and for very good reason. And so here we have 10 fragrance extremes ranging from my most expensive, my most opulent, most daring, most clone, most popular, most flankered, most linear, most versatile, most complex, most complimented. I would encourage everybody out there if you are watching this video, leave a comment down below. If you are a content creator here on YouTube, I would love to see what is your version of this video. I'm gonna leave all the categories down below in the description box for your convenience. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Hope you took something from a value from this video. If you did, please do consider supporting this channel by subscribing to it. Of course, make sure to enable all notifications by clicking on the bell icon and give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Thank you for watching. Love you all. And we'll see you in the next episode. Bye.